Okay, we're back here live in New York City. This is SiliconANGLE and Mookie Bonds, The Cube, a special presentation uh, for covering HP's moonshot announcement, changing the game, a seminal moment, an inflection point for the data center. Really, really a market history as we posted earlier on SiliconANGLE.com, Dave Donatelli on earlier. Um, game changer, new technology. This is gonna be one of those points in time that we're gonna look back and say, hey, the server business was changed and ultimately the data center. This is The Cube, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, uh, this is Dave Vellante from wikibon.org. Mark Potter is here. He's mm -hmm. the Vice President and General Manager of the ISS Group at HP. Mark, I've been listening to you talk about uh, uh, modular components <laughs> for a long time, but yeah. this is just over the top. <laughs> well, yeah, this is kind of, I think, about uh, the next big instance of converged infrastructure and what we can do when we think about server storage, networking. And what's so exciting about Moonshot, and hopefully your your uh, listeners and, and everybody out there can kind of see from all the modules is like, this is about HP kind of opening up in a whole new ecosystem and bringing that ecosystem to bear at some of the most difficult workloads out there in the server industry. And when we do that, it's you get incredible results, uh, savings on energy, savings on space, power, and cost. So it's 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 a pretty exciting day for I us. I mean, I mean, the numbers are just ridiculous. If you look at the power savings mm -hmm. alone, that's kind of a no-brainer. So obviously, a lot of people want the product. Um, and obviously you have to roll it out. So let's take us through the, the day in the life of what's going on with you right now. Obviously you, had a you did an introduction today. Yeah. You're on the webcast, you're talking to all the press and all the, the folks out there. Um, huge software driven, led infrastructure, converged infrastructure with the energy savings. So tell, tell us what was the launch like for you? How to, any surprises, yeah. uh, highlights, and then talk about some of the things that happened as a result of that. No, it, uh, I would just say for, for everyone out there, this, the amount of energy that goes into putting something like this together around the world is phenomenal. We had events all around the world. Uh, we actually co, um, we had a, a co-broadcast um, in London with uh, some folks there and customers, and we obviously spent a lot of time kind of building up to this. And so it seemed like one hour, but a lot of work went behind the scenes. And then after that, we've really been talking to analysts, uh, other press, and just, um, you know, from myself to Dave to all the different customers and partners, we've just been out there, you know, sharing uh, with everyone kind of what what we're doing here as a team, what we're doing here as part of this ecosystem to really kind of reset the curve. So Dave Donatelli said um, ridiculous number that you know the servers can be powered by I don't know how many light bulbs, six, you know, a handful <laughs> of sixty watt light bulbs, but in more seriously, millions of servers that these days require yeah. seriously power yeah. plants to. to power them. A power plant per million, give basically. Give us some yeah. stats yeah. on the numbers, because I want to get that out, because I think that's something that people look at, oh, yeah, I've heard low energy before. I mean, just talk yeah, about I mean, the uh, just the growth in the next few years, we're, we're talking 8 to 10 million more servers. Uh, I think the, the the numbers we use, if you looked at that, we'd have to basically build data centers, the, the, the width, if you put them in football field size strips, that would run the length of Manhattan Island. And you know, quite frankly, when you look at the amount of energy, the amount of space, et cetera, we knew that you know we really needed to bring in a fundamentally different approach. And that's why this is so important. We're resetting the entire curve of the industry standard server and creating optimization points that just are staggering when you look at the results. And the point of this is bringing that whole other ecosystem into this, the, the Atom solutions you just heard from Intel, uh, but we, we're not stopping there. It's also bringing alternate technologies like D DSPs, uh, FPGAs, uh, other kinds of computing architectures, including ARM, and we'll even support Xeon in here. And so it's really about when you perfectly take a converged infrastructure solution and define it such that the application is really what's creating the server, you get great results. I got to ask you about the uh, mm -hmm. the other piece that we love about this, which is something that we we we're, we pump a lot on SiliconANGLE Wikibon is the software-led infrastructure, which is what we call not software-defined because we feel it's not yet defined, <laughs> uh, being defined by you guys and others. Um, but there was some people on Twitter, you know, mm -hmm. giving us a little bit of a you know back slap, saying, "Hey, that's not really software-defined server." So I got to ask you, what is the software-defined server component of this? Hey, energy check. Ridiculous, amazing, that alone is a no-brainer, should close all deals. But like, talk about the software-defined piece. So what does that really mean? Yeah. On the chips, does it talk about software development? We talked about LAMP stack earlier. So can you parse that out? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, maybe back up a little bit. When I think of a software-defined server, you know, we've kind of led this, this, uh, this, you know, thrust for a while. And, and I look at even kind of today's C-class blade system where, 
from a software definition, we can actually create the right number of network uh, connections on a server. We can connect those network connections at any speed to the right network. So we kind of self-configured the server for the application. So if it's running virtualization, maybe we instantiate six physical NICs at a certain speed. If it's running a different application, maybe it's a couple of 10 gig, maybe it's fiber channel, maybe it's all ethernet, but we can kind of create that on the fly. So we have one building block. The big thing about Moonshot is really it's the software application. We start there and then we say what is the perfect hardware implementation using not only the traditional ecosystem of the server space, but this growing emerging ecosystem that's getting created out of these billions and billions of devices, cell phones, tablets, et cetera. How do we actually build the perfect ecosystem that's married up to that application? So in essence, the application defines the server. And, and not only does it define that server definition, but it also configures that server with the right fabric connectivity, the right storage, so we can assign the right amount of storage to that, that node, we can connect that node up to the right fabric in the right way, and then we can connect those fabrics out into the enterprise the way that an enterprise wants it connected. So the whole construct is really all about starting with the application, and then how do we perfectly optimize the board itself as well as the configuration of the board in this, what I'll call this hive of uh, bees that are working on this workload. So rack, dense, rack and, density, and power consumption, yeah. check, and then software developers, per se, on top yeah, of it. Yeah, and that's where the, uh, the Pathfinder innovation ecosystem is so critical because me saying that is easy, actually doing what I just said is very, very challenging. And so that the, as big a part of this as the platform itself is that ecosystem, that lab, and we've got software developers as well as hardware developers in there basically innovating together to perfectly optimize those solutions. And then our reference architectures will allow us to roll out in an open way, a cloud, a, using our converged cloud. So being able to deploy this with OpenStack and our converged cloud solution, being able to deploy the network through software defined networking constructs and create a, a solution that's completely data center compatible, but that gives you those savings. That's really important and that's hard to do, but that's what's so groundbreaking about this announcement. I got to ask the, the storage question. We really haven't talked today much about storage, John. We oftentimes in this program talked about the disruption that's coming mm -hmm. in storage. So to the extent that the server infrastructure completely changes, it's got to have ripple effects. You just talked about converged infrastructure, obviously storage mm -hmm. is a part of it. How do you see that affecting specifically the storage you know, part of the stack? Well, you know, uh, I think we see the same notion of kind of uh, software-defined storage and with our virtual uh, store, virtual store set of products, that will actually be part of this as well. And so think about as we add storage capacity into the Moonshot system, we can take that storage capacity and assign it to any of the nodes in a very, very flexible way, as well as add the fault-tolerant capability. So the, the notion of being ad able to add and create the right balance of uh, compute and storage in this architecture is very important so we can slice that storage up and assign it to the compute uh, capacity here very, very flexibly. And again, that's a, you know, back to this management architecture and the simplicity of bringing this converged infrastructure all together. And Flash, if appropriate, or a member store yeah, someday. Yeah, so we or, support yeah. Flash today, and as you think about moving forward, um, you know, maybe it, it is all solid state, or maybe it's, you know, phase change, or maybe it's MemRistor mm -hmm. on these solutions. And, you know, the data can be um, non-volatile right there in memory in, in the long-term, you know, equation with MemRistor. Okay, I got to ask you one final question because mm -hmm. we're getting the, we're getting ready yeah, to okay. hook. Um, obviously, we're really into this whole modern era of computing, mm -hmm. modern enterprise. In your in your vision within HP, what's your view of this modern enterprise? What does it look like, and what are some of the things that you guys are doing and driving to? You don't have to be specific on the product, but yeah. like just from the vision standpoint, and we're in a new era. I mean, yeah. Internet of Things, cloud, all the things you talk about are awesome, but where it's a modern era, what is the new modern era going to look like? Yeah, the new modern era, every enterprise is going to have to understand hybrid applications in a hybrid world, meaning an application can be running on-premise as well as part of that application can be running in the cloud. It needs to be managed as one. It needs to be able to deal with the scale of these billions and billions of devices coming in, creating masses of data. And so they've got to be able to react, be able to manage their resources, not only on-premise, but across their data centers that may be virtual, that may be hosted in, in cloud data centers. They need to manage it as one and be able to deal with the onslaught of data and devices coming at them. And that's exactly what this Moonshot architecture gives them. That's exactly what HP's converged cloud strategy gives our customers is the ability to manage this hybrid world that they're going to be in. 
with these leading converged infrastructure architectures. There it is, Mark, proud of the senior vice president laying out the vision, but more importantly, simplicity for customers and value, moonshot, uh, you know, rack density, power consumption, as well as software-led uh, server storage networking, all happening at HP. Donatelli calls it convergent infrastructure. Again, a similar moment. Congratulations. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. I know you're super busy. We'll be right back with uh, Jim Gontier next here at HP, closing out the day, breaking it all down. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>